Um, uh, Minister Jolie, I, I think the difficulty that one of the difficulties that we have here is that the European Union is is along with the NATO alliance providing billions of dollars uh, in cash, weapons, munitions to Ukraine to defend themselves. And at the same time, paying hundreds of billions of dollars to Russia, which they are using in turn to fund their war effort. Canada, by returning this turbine, becomes complicit in a situation where we're aiding the European Union, essentially funding both sides of this war. And Canada should never, ever be in a position like that. Now. I, the talking points I've been hearing over the last couple of days from you and Minister Wilkinson are that, well, now we're, you know, we're calling Putin's bluff. But that wasn't what you said in early July when you made the decision. There was no talk about calling a bluff or playing a, a game with Mr. Putin. No, what you said was that um, returning the turbine was integral for Germany's economy and its citizens as the country is currently heavily dependent on Russian energy. That was what you said. You didn't tell the Canadian people you did to call anyone's bluff until I think yesterday when I read your comments in the Globe. So that, that's just not fair to say at all that this is about calling Mr. Putin's bluff. And in fact, it stretches credulity in my mind to say that your conversations with the Germans back in early July or June, whenever you were meeting, was about calling Mr. Putin's bluff. It was about domestic supply encouraging domestic supply. Now, the Ukrainian Canadian Congress has said that your rationale also makes no sense. And we'll hear from them later. Uh, it's been known for years that Mr. Putin uses energy as a foreign policy tool to punish enemies and that it was entirely predictable. Uh, that Russia would continue to use energy as a weapon after Canada acquiesced to Russian blackmail, essentially. The reality is this was a terrible decision. It puts Canada in a terrible spot. It doesn't help Germany uh, and, and, and makes Canada look weak in the eyes of the Russians. Isn't that right, Minister? Madame la Ministre. Merci, Stéphane. Um, so, Marty, of course, uh, I hear uh, your preoccupation and I, I hear the preoccupation of the UCT. Uh, at the same time, uh, the reality is that for too long, Europe has been depending on cheap Russian gas, as mentioned by Minister Wilkinson, by Jonathan uh, in his remarks. And that was also uh, reiterated yesterday when I was with my colleague, the Minister of Foreign Affairs from Germany, Annalena Baerbock. Um, from, from for too long, Germany has been relying on that gas. Europe, not only Germany, many other countries, including the Czech Republic and others, have been relying on that gas. But now the reality is that they are moving from relying on cheap Russian gas to uh, also finding new solutions. And that's why they've been in active conversations but with our government. Great, but I will, just, I will just continue to answer your question. Well, I have a limited uh, and, and time, goal, so I, I would like yeah, to Yeah, I know, Marty, but yeah. my goal is really to answer your question. Yeah, now, well, at the same time, this was not an easy decision to make. And for many weeks, Jonathan and I were actively in conversation with our German counterparts, which reached out to us at, from the beginning and also with Ukrainians to try to facilitate the conversation, not only between the three of us, but mainly between Germany and between Ukraine, because this is also something that is between the both countries. Now, to make sure that we would keep the alliance together, that we all agree that we need to continue to be strongly united behind Putin, we need to make sure that there would need to be any form of pretext, any form of alibi. And that's why the expression of calling Putin's bluff is the one that we're uh, well, using. Let me ask you why, that is what why we're doing. with the greatest respect, Minister, why didn't you say you were calling his bluff in early July? Well, at the time, the decision was still being discussed well, amongst that was, the allies. Because that, because that wasn't the rationale then, was it? But no, no, no. That was always the rationale. No. Okay. Because, of course, Marty, what well, was but you most important why didn't, if it was the rationale, it was why didn't sure you say that, that in early July? Why not in early July? We would keep to be united until that 
time, we were still in discussion with Ukrainians. The last conversation I had about the turbine with my colleague, my Ukrainian colleague, was actually when I was at the G20. I think it was in Bali. I, it was two o'clock in the morning, and I had a discussion with Minister Kuleba and the Minister of Foreign Affairs um, uh, okay. from Germany. Um, I, and I, I do have limited well. time, and I, I, I think but I'm giving the you fact the fact that then, I, so I get the, to ask more than one question. So, so I'm, I, I'm so just Martin, curious. Just when, giving you the facts yeah, I appreciate for that. you to be able to understand the yeah, situation. Yeah, I understand. Um, when you were doing your due diligence on this decision, did you um, did um, um, the German government tell you that they needed the return of these turbines to increase gas supply? Uh, that was never part of uh, the discussion. To the contrary, so the they never asked. They, they the, never asked you. They never told you they needed the turbine so that gas supply could be increased. In terms of increasing gas supply, that was no. never the case. Maybe Jonathan wants to add something um, to well, that. No, because I'm, in terms I'm, of flow I'm talking of gas, to you. Uh, no, no, uh, but I, I, wanna, I think If I want to ask Jonathan a question, I'll ask him a question. But, okay, now let me ask you another But Marty, one. do you want the answer? Well, Marty, I mean, question? that question actually was the subject of conversations between myself and the Germans, as, as you would expect in terms of energy ministers. So I'm happy to answer your question. Um, we, we certainly discussed the issues around gas supply. As you know, there was concern about the reductions within the pipeline and the, and the Russian um, statement that this was as a result of the turbine. Um, and so certainly we talked about how returning the turbine potentially could address that issue if in fact the Russians were telling the truth, although most of us were of the view that they were not. And therefore it was really very much about calling the bluff of the, of the, of the, of the European, of, of the Russians. And, and as, I, as, as my colleague has said, that that statement and that approach was supported not just by Germany, but by the European Union and by the United States. Minister Wilkinson, at the time you made this decision, uh, was there any discussion of calling Mr. Putin's bluff at the time of the decision? A absolutely. And, and, so, and so, certainly so, I discussed that with Minister Havak, okay, who is so, the German energy minister uh, on that, an ongoing basis. In early, that was in absolutely part of the conversation. In late June and early July. Absolutely it was, okay. yes. And, and so, Marky, so, if and I can so, add so to why, that, so I would say second. that so why, I spoke what, to, what, about that with Secretary Blinken. Yeah, and so, uh, at that time, yeah, and yeah. he was also supportive because we all agreed that that we needed to be united against yeah. Putin. So why didn't you say that when you made Monsieur the decision? Monsieur le Président, je pense que le temps est. Mr. Chair, I think we have used up all of our time, Mr. Bergeron.